Vitamina Interviews once more. We have the pleasure to have here with us uh, Paco, who has been then traveling around the world, and we are really fortunate to have him tonight here with us. How are you? All good, yeah. I just arrived, uh, long flight, but I came straight from Buenos Aires with the ferry. No sleep, yeah. so I had like, I don't know, three, four hours sleep in the hotel, and now I'm at the party. Definitely, we know about it because, you know, we have had then other DJ interviews and getting some hours of sleep then during a tour is really, really difficult. So um, I hope you had a good trip then from Buenos Aires to here. And uh, we're going to start with our first question. How did you get to know electronic music? Well, um, uh, as a teenager, I lived in Berlin and, uh, you know, I was listening to some radio shows on and, and the weekend. And in the night, uh, at the time, like uh, end of the 80s, early 90s, suddenly a different kind of music that was uh, uh, broadcasted there that was not uh, normally heard uh, in, a, in a general public. So I, I started wondering, what is this? And I, I went to some of the events, some of the parties, and then uh, I started looking for those uh, uh, DJ vinyls. Yeah, they were, they were only available in some special shops. So. I started collecting some of this music, and then uh, a couple of years later, I only uh, then I started becoming a, a DJ and a producer myself. Yeah. That was like around mid '90s. Who were those first artists captured on vinyl that really also captured your imagination? Those first influences on your music or your taste? Yeah, first influences uh, I would say was. Um, I don't know, mid 80s, I think, um, pop music had uh, uh, started uh, a trend uh, for 12 inch uh, singles. So they had like a normal radio versions of, of hits like Deepish Mode, Alpha Feel, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, and stuff like that. And then um, the producers used to make like long uh, versions for the discotheque and uh, with more instrumental parts. and. Um, so I was always uh, fascinated by this stuff, and then with the with the end of the 80s and the early 90s, this became actually a, a culture on its own. Like the, this kind of DJ music evolved into house and techno music, and then um, yeah, that was my thing, and that's that's how I got hooked up with it. Definitely. Uh, so what happens next? Because you start collecting music, but. What made you then take the decision, I want to mix it? What was this, the, the charm of it? I was, um, like I said, I started collecting like 300, 400, 500 vinyls. I started realizing, yeah, a lot of this has a similar sound in it. And I thought, okay, I have to find out how this is made. How, how do uh, people uh, put the sounds together and make this music? And I started uh, looking in a, in a shop, in a music shop, for, for instruments and um, those uh, instruments that was not available anymore because it was from the 80s like uh, Roland 909 drum machines or bass lines and, and synthesizers all of this stuff was only like in second-hand shops and people were making the music from uh, you know ancient instruments vintage instruments so it was uh, again like first it was a search for the DJ vinyls and then there was another search for these instruments to start uh, getting something together to make a little home studio and start producing my own music and uh, first it was really uh, really really you know like bedroom style like <laughs> like one little drum machine and one a keyboard and then started improving and uh, starting getting more uh, better uh, instruments and then yeah that was like the time I started uh, working with Tesor 95 was also the time I uh, improved uh, my, my uh, home studio a little bit so I was able to record more uh, good music like the way I really uh, intended to and then um, yeah, that's how I got in, uh, in contact with Trezor Records as well to release my music. Fantastic. Do you keep any of the first instruments you got? Or, or, I mean, or do you still use them in your productions? Yeah, it was, uh, 
uh, a drum machine called Boss DR660, which is actually, uh, even by nowadays standard, was, uh, it's still a good machine. It was uh, digital, of course, but it, it already had like this kind of uh, sounds that you hear uh, all the time in, in, in parties and in, in this kind of digital music. So it's it's a, it's a good uh, thing, but it was uh, rather uh, a good accident, happy accident that I found this one. And then I had a, a, a TR-707, which was a thing was uh, used a lot in Chicago house and acid music. And um, yeah, keyboards uh, was a Novation base station. Uh, it was brand new at the time and yeah, I was I was just picking it up from from the shop because it was one of the first generation in the 90s where the manufacturers started to realize oh there's a big market and a big demand for this again you know so the 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 big uh, manufacturers like Yamaha, Korg, and Roland nowadays they all start making analog uh, gear again or virtual analog which has these old con control styles and. Um, but in the 90s, it was still, you know, everything was uh, more going towards having only one menu, one little screen, and then you have only one up and down button on the whole uh, uh, keyboard. So it was really not that useful for techno music. Eh? So a lot of people started uh, using samplers and uh, making their own uh, little sample libraries and started making their tracks from samples. Eh? So that's was another way of, of uh, approaching this kind of uh, this kind of sound. So I'm getting that uh, one of those uh, little samplers as well. <laughs> At the time, super expensive. Yeah, nowadays, of course, uh, everyone has all this stuff on the laptop already. Right now, uh, let's get into a little of current affairs. Uh, then, are you living now in Berlin? How do you feel the scene over there? What's going on? Yeah, now I live uh, four hours uh, west of Berlin, actually. I moved out of uh, Berlin 2010. Um, yeah, I have... Uh, uh, I found a, a, a nice uh, flat in the countryside. And uh, the, the nature and the air is much better yeah, than in the city. But I keep going back to Berlin. And uh, I, 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 I would say I live in the middle between Berlin and Amsterdam. So I am always still good connected. I can just hop on a train and in three, four hours I'm back in the city. And I, um, I keep going back and I also keep playing in Berlin as well. I have a residency at Tresor still, like, I don't know, 25 years now. And um, yeah, um, I think it's, it's uh, a lot more even moving nowadays. Uh, every three years there's a thing, uh, especially in this scene, Oh, this is dead, this music is dead, there's nothing evolving anymore, there are too many DJs, everything is sold out, but actually it's still, you know, everything is uh, going to another level and another level, and uh, you can see always in the clubs there are, there are new generations of people coming, and I think it's gonna evolve and continue even even broader, even bigger, but um, on a, not on a commercial level, like in the middle of the 90s there was a bit excessive commercial level with the love parade uh, having um, telecom as the sponsors and cigarette companies and now it goes back a little bit more to uh, you know club level and very good clubs with quality lineups and yeah uh, like one of the reasons in berlin was also um, why i actually uh, ended up leaving the city there's so much going on that you have uh, every every night, even in the weeknight, you can go out and have three, four choices of clubs that you can go to, and it's really uh, exhausting to follow the club scene when you are part of it. You 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 have your own uh, you know concepts and you have your own music and your own uh, uh, schedules, and then you also go out to club nights with your friends. And then, you know, uh, it ends up with uh, a really uh, demanding uh, and challenging uh, situation for the body. <laughs> so, so I said, okay, I've, I've been in this uh, circle for, for many, many years. So I said, okay, I can, 
uh, kind of uh, get out of this and still be connected with it and still do my all my things. I, I, I produce a lot of music and um, I play uh, shows around the world, but I don't have to be out on the uh, in the club scene uh, every weekend, every weeknight, and every weekend to to uh, have many drinks with uh, with all the people. You know, <laughs> that was just a little bit overkill in Berlin. That's the thing in Berlin. You know, Berlin can be a, like a black hole for people who come new to the city. I think that's a phenomenon. I see a lot of people who come new who want to start a career as a DJ or as a, uh, you know, as being a part of this scene in any way. And they get sucked into this club scene and they lose all their direction. And, uh, you know, like they came to Berlin initially uh, with, a, with a plan to make uh, studies with cultural uh, background or to have any kind of normal life. And then they get sucked into this club scene and they Two years later, you meet them and they have a lot of tattoos and colored hair and only black clothes and it's like, what the heck happened here? You know, I see this a lot. So this is really happening in Berlin. It's not, it's not, uh, not a tale. <laughs> okay, so you need discipline. Otherwise, you get lost in the party. Yeah, I, I would, I would say it's it's it was one of the reasons that drive me out of the city. Yeah. And uh, I also realized once I, uh, you know, it was gradually I moved out and then I went back and moved out again. And then um, now I, I, I have a flat out uh, out in the countryside and uh, I, I realized that my health improved also a lot. I, I don't have any more uh, typical uh, seasonal diseases like uh, sneeze or cold or influenza and stuff like that. So it really helps uh, a lot with me with the health that's you know that's that was my number number one reason and uh, yeah otherwise I'm still connected with the whole uh, music scene I'm still integrated yeah definitely it's so good to hear then that you do it for your health and for your own sanity then to be in a, in a scene that sometimes can be really crazy and so demanding to be you know like two places at the same time <laughs> on a weekday so uh, you have had then a residency for so many years at Treso. You have produced so much great music. So you're building a legacy. What would be then your message to your fans, our audience, and all of your followers around the world? Yeah, message. I mean, this music for me, it's uh, like a war tool. Yeah? It doesn't really have a, a, a big, uh, a big theme on it. It's just the, the main uh, thing is that this this kind of sound is understood around the world uh, you don't need uh, languages you know it's it's a thing that goes directly to the body and the people uh, come together and have a good time and uh, that's probably the one thing that they try to uh, to to bring out to the world when uh, when it became a mass movement in germany that uh, that uh, it can be uh, against uh, uh, all the hatred and all the uh, crazy things that going on in the politics then you can uh, see the people coming to, to a weekend young people coming together and having a good time without fighting and without uh, 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 crazy arguments and um, you know that was the main uh, main idea of this whole thing to, to have a good time and I think that's that's still the main message of this you know it's that's not any political thing or uh, I mean, uh, there's no real uh, poetry in it. You know, everything is very, um, uh, very uh, ground level. Yeah, very basic level. And uh, like I said, it's, there's no language barrier. So people here in South America or people in Japan or in Australia or USA, everyone can understand it the same way. And um, that's how all the scenes in all the different countries develop. And um, yeah, that's that's how this whole uh, uh, movement uh, became a worldwide thing. Yeah, so I'm happy to be a part of it, and uh, I try my best to to continue and, and contribute my part. Yeah. Okay, so holding the flag really high of peace, love, unity, and respect, we have a living legend with us tonight. So thank you so much for this uh, time, for these minutes to get you know a little. Uh, better of you, uh, then we're going to enjoy your music really a lot. So thank you also for coming and you know showing some techno culture <laughs> in South America as well. 
Uh, any other message you could think of? Yeah, I can only say thank you for all the fans and supporters and all the people to come to the events that I play and uh, I, I enjoy very much uh, coming to South America, especially. Uh, I mean, the last three, four years, I come uh, many times to play in Argentina and play here in, in Uruguay the last two years and um, Chile and Colombia. Uh, I think South America is really at the moment at the front of the of the whole world uh, when it comes to this kind of underground scene, club scene. Uh, there's a lot of things going on. Many young people with a good idea, good vision, and uh, yeah, I'm glad that I'm a guest in this area of the world. Yeah. Thank you then so much for him uh, for being here with us, and thank you, and have a good day. Okay, thank you.